<laughs> I, I tend to have like divine interrupters and it's getting close to when I have to teach. So um, my sister just called. That's why the video interrupted. Well, <laughs> I've never evangelized before in any way, shape or form. I do believe in God. I am a Christian, but I struggle a lot with how much um, deception and corruption I've seen in some churches. And I'm very wary of that, but I'm equally wary of almost every other path I've witnessed. So, you know, we do need people in our lives, but I need to be in places and spaces where people are holding each other accountable and are open to difficult conversations. And I haven't been in a place where I've been open to difficult conversations. All the stuff that I'm saying right here isn't something I would have talked about even one year ago. Barely even in my own mind, let alone out loud. Certainly not with church people because I would have felt judged or criticized. And, you know, some churches are very anti anything like New Age, but I think that there need to be better delineations in what that means. I think what they're really saying is we're afraid that you're going to get, like, corrupted by something that has some sort of secret evil in it. And I do think that's possible, because it happened to me. Which doesn't mean all New Age stuff is, but it means that some stuff, it's sneaking in there. Darkness masquerading as light, but I don't mean dark and light. Uh, evil masquerading as goodness, I guess? I don't know. But, you know. This is way outside of my comfort zone to talk about this stuff. I used to very recently be afraid of ever even being seen as slightly uncool for even saying the word God, so I don't know what all of this is. I guess the pandemic and the election year has been more honest or more transparent, I guess. So, evil can sneak its way inside of anything, inside of a church, inside of a pastor's ear. I don't want to scare you when I say that, but I think that that's why the Holy Spirit is put in all of us. And so if you're at a church where a pastor can't take any feedback and won't allow you to hold them accountable for things that they say or do that seem not in line. And I'm not saying they have to be perfect because nobody's perfect and how could that even be possible? But if they won't even let you have conversations about things, or analyze things if that threatens their faith, then A, that's probably not the right church for you, but B, also, that pastor shouldn't be clinging to whatever, you know, it's, it's questionable. And so I think we should be watching for that as people who have faith, you know? And if you're somebody whose faith is always wavering, or is almost completely gone, which has happened to me many times in my life, so much so that I wouldn't have wanted to listen to someone like me trying to help me get it back. I'd be like, screw you, go away. You just ruined you for me. <laughs> like, that's how I used to feel about people who talked about this stuff. I was like, ew, gross. Why are you talking about that? Gross, gross, gross. Ew. And then I thought they were like some cult person. And I was like, oh, forget it. And then I would never watch me again. But if that's you, obviously you're going to go away. But what about those people who are like, their faith's messed up. But in my opinion, if your faith is messed up because you're seeing people suck, then I can tell you from personal experience that I tried to hide or change or alter or get rid of my faith, and I still noticed people suck. So, like, people suck whether or not they're believing in God or not. And like, and you can call sucking sinning, or you can call it sucking. But people are hypocrites, they're liars, they're selfish, they do things for others conditionally, they focus more accidentally it's not their fault they focus more on how a situation makes them feel like their own anxiety rather than on whether or not their friend really wants them at their birthday party they it that's a form of sucking even if it's so justifiable like oh but she has anxiety let's be nice to her it's like yeah she does have anxiety but she's also never there for her friend that she says is her best friend but she's not pushing herself out of or compromising by saying well I can't go to your birthday party but can I take you out one-on-one -on -one? like they're not offering that they're just getting lost in their own feelings about how bad they feel that they can never show up and then that turns into self-pity which turns into remorse or not just remorse it turns into this like wheel of like 
feeling like a terrible person, which can lead to these really horrific thoughts, which I think is this other thing getting in your ear and playing on that and turning natural human emotions like shame or guilt or fear, turning them against us into conditions. Like those aren't you. You're not anxious. Like you're feeling anxiety. You're feeling anxiety means fear, right? You're feeling fear. But you are an open and wonderful vessel. Whether you feel light or dark on the inside, uh, I think of that as like light as in like a thing, like a spark shooting out or open and spacious, like dark on the inside, but they're both good. Like it's no matter which thing you feel, like you are, that both would be holy to me. Like that's all holy. That's beautiful. <laughs> I just thought of my Swiss cheese thoughts from the last video. <laughs> being a ball of light with little gaping holes, darkness shooting out. <laughs> well, anyway, that is just weird. I don't know what I am these days. This channel has gone south. I should move south and sell my keyboards and give up whatever this very lucrative path is that I'm on. Most of my videos have two views, some have zero. I post them too often, they're not refined. I'm just weird. I never thought I'd be a weird per person because my whole early life is, con is defined by getting A's, which is being whatever the teacher wanted you to be. Um, getting A's and also impressing people, you know, being a music director for musicals and trying to get the best reviews, whether it was, you know, in my hometown, small town, but still crowds of 500, or whether it was like on Off Off Broadway in New York City. Like, I played piano for Sex the Musical and I have sexual trauma in my background, but I did whatever I needed to do to get that resume built and make others happy and be successful on paper and in conversations and get more jobs and more gigs and impress everyone and press, press, press. Like that was my youth. And this is the least impressive or least impressive oriented YouTube channel I could have ever not hoped to make. So I'm aware of it. If you're noticing that, I'm aware of it too. I understand that this is just weird. I don't know what compulsion this is other than I guess this is just how I was made and I'm just finally sort of being free to be me and I don't know how much longer I'll do these this is probably the equivalent of like when a trauma survivor is encouraged to blog and start a blog and just share 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 and then like they do it for a few years and then everyone's like whoa well they got that out and then the person feels healed maybe that's what this is maybe this is my trauma vlog <laughs> Wee. So, because I mean, I also really enjoy like making up musicals with little kids and like letting them have like weird, funny, goofy experiences and like, you know, being childlike myself and yeah, running camps, not necessarily just little kids, like teens, college age, like adults. Well, I don't really write musicals with adults anymore. Anything that's really self-serious, I've kind of lost an interest in. So like what we did in my undergrad uh, you know, where you like devote a year to like writing the best musical ever. I mean, I did so much of that for so long that I can't believe in that process anymore because I have like, I have like the destruction of these beautiful planets in my past of like, here's a movie we invested all these, you know, two million dollars of fundraising and all these years of work into. And, you know, it's not that it didn't do well, it did very well. But now it's, you know, it didn't, didn't change my life, so to speak. Like it didn't, lead to other movie opportunities. I'm not writing music for Disney or I don't know. I'm not trying to talk against my past. I'm just trying to say I've lost an interest in crafting things intentionally for like years and years. Like the way Pixar did with Toy Story 4. I think I heard something about like I can't do that to my own life unpaid <laughs> for four years putting all my hope on one project like that. Like uh yeah. So this is kind of the opposite of that. This is like, hmm, need a little meditative moment in the woods? Here you go, I'll write a song. And then after I write the song, sometimes I just feel like explaining the song, or I feel self-conscious, and I just start rambling. Sometimes it's the other way around. All right then, that's my channel. Have a great day, bye.